Hi, my name is Patrick Miller. I'm Cloud Support Engineer here at AWS. Today I'm going to talk about Partition Project with Amazon Athena. Partition Project is a new feature launched in the beginning of the year. In this presentation, I will cover the below topics. What is partitions? How to load partitions in a table? And I'm going to talk about Partition Project and how to architect partitions when work with Parkit files. Partition is an important technique for organized data sets, so they can be queried efficiently. It organizes data in a structure based on distinct values of one or more columns. By partitioning your data, you can restrict the amount of data scanned by each query, thus improve performance and reduce costs. To create a table that uses partitions, you must define it during the create table statement. For example, we can define the root folder for our table as bucket name plus path. In my case, the path is sample commits by year, month, ig. After that, you can define year as partition, for example, or we can go deep and define month and ig or any other partition that you need for your use case. On the create table statement, you define the partitions. For example, here I'm creating a table. Here is the column type, the partitions, and the type of the partitions, and the location. On Athena, when you run this create table, it's going to create a table with three partitions. And when you query the table, it's going to read the data inside of this path. To load the partitions in the table, we have two ways. We can run the MSK repair table to update the metadata in the catalog. The MSK repair table scans the location and add partitions to the metadata catalog. For example, if we query this table that we created previously, we're going to see that it's not going to read any data. The reason is because we didn't load the partitions yet. After we run the MSK repair table, it's going to load all partitions that we have on, on S3 path at this moment. So this is the paths that I have on my S3. Now, if I try to run the query again, we're going to see that it's going to read the date. When a new partition is creating S3, you need to run the MSK repair table to load the new partitions again. A second option to load the partition is using Glue Crawler. Crawlers automatically identify the partition structure of your dataset and they populate the AWS Glue data catalog. After you crawl a table, you can view the partitions that the crawler or the MSK repair table command create by navigating to the table on the AWS Glue console and choosing View Partitions. For example, we create this table. If we go to Glue Catalog, this is the table that we create. If we go inside of the table, we can see the columns and we can see all partitions created. Partition projection. You can use partition projection at Tina to speed up query processing of high partition tables and automate partition management. In partition projection, Partition values and location are calculated from configuration instead of reading from a repository like AWS Glue Data Catalog. With partition projection, you don't need to run MSK repair table or to create a Glue crawler. To create a table with partition projection, we need to define it in the create table state. For example, here I am creating a table with two partitions year and month. And in the properties, we define the type of the partitions, for example, year type integer, and the range of the partition, for example, 2014, 2016. As you can see here, we define the range for the possible values for the partition column. We need to avoid the use of high cardinality ranges. 
Here, I'm going to create a table using partition project. Here is the table name. The partitions of my data, in this case, it's year, month. Projection name equals true. And then we define the partitions. For example, year is type integer and the range is 2014 to 2016. And for the column month or partition month, we define that it's an integer and the range is 1 to 12. The path that we are using is this path here. After you create this table, we can already run queries and read it. For example, here we are reading that path that we define inside of the table. If we go to Glue Data Catalog, this is the new table create. As you can see, now we don't have the partitions load. So you don't need to load the partitions every time. The next stop is architecture partitions with parquet files. Before I jump in how you can architect your partitions, we need to understand how Parquet file works. Apache Parquet is a columnar file format. The columns are grouped together by row group. For example, here we have row group 0 and row group 1. We have column A inside of row group 0 and column B. Each row group is compressed and in the footer we have the metadata about the row group. So, in the footer of the file, we have all metadata related with this file and the row groups. For example, if you run the parquet tool to read the row groups, we can see that for the column IG inside of the row group 1, the mean value is 1 and the max value is 4. We can use the parquet row groups to reduce the number of partitions needed. It helps with partitions with high cardinality. We recommend to write the files ordered by the call that you're going to use in the where clause. For example, here we have the file that's not ordered. So in both row, row groups, we have the value 1 here and here, and the value 2 here and here. In the footer, we can see that the mean value for the row group 1 is 1 and the max value is 9. And for row group 2, the mean value is 1 and the max value is 10. So, if you run a query and the where clause is ig equals 1, we need to read and compress both row groups. And if you run a query and the where clause is ig equals 3, which don't exist in this file, we still need to decompress both row groups because of the min and the max values on the footer configuration. However, if your file is ordered, by example, here we have row group 1 with the value 1 and 2, row group 2 with 4, 9 and 10. On the footer for the row group 1, the min value is 1 and the max value is 2. For row group 2, the mean value is 4 and the max value is 9. So, if you run a query and in the where clause you have ig equals 1, we will decompress only the row group 1. Also, if you run a query and the query and the where clause is ig equals 3, which don't exist in this file, we skip both of row groups. That is an important concept because the column ID has a high cardinality and is not a good option for a partition. So here is an example. In the month 10, we have three files and the total is 10 megabytes. And if we query only the partition 5, we have only one file with 21 kilobytes. I copy this entire data to a new path. And in this new path, we don't have the IG as partition. 
but the files are ordered by ID. So instead, inside of the path, we have three files and the total is 9 megabytes. Using the both tables that we created before, for example, the table create has as partition year, month, and age. If we check the strip path, we have only one file with 21 kilobytes. And for the second table, in a different path, we have partitions year and month. If we check the files inside of this path, we have three files with 9.9 megabytes. Now, if we query this table, for example, counting by repo name. In the table where the IG is a partition, we read 09, 0 0.09 kilobytes. And if we do the same with the table where IG is not a partition, we read 0. 69 kilobytes and not 10 megabytes. And another example is if we select only two columns, for example, commit and the IG. In this table, we have the IG as partition. So when we run the query, as you can see, the dot scan is 1.46 kilobytes. And if we do the same with the table, where IG is not a partition, it is can more data, but not much more. So this is a second option that you can use to define your partitions. Thank you for watching and have a good day.